welcome back. This time I'm going to do just a little like what do you mean party mix and just spit my mind and rant into the microphone for a bit. But first, a bit of housekeeping. Thank you. Love you all. We've hit 700 subscribers and 17 patrons. Thank you to every last one of you. I do post on the Patreon what's going down with the dollars I get and the behind the scenes on how I try to make these videos. And that is at patreon slash WDYM videos. All right. First of all, we'll start with something I thought of just now as I was turning on my computer. We've seen a lot of record-breaking temperatures in Europe and how their heat waves going and I've expressed my deep, deep fear of the upcoming Australian summer because usually it's pretty fucked. And if the Northern Hemisphere summer is anything to go off of, we are absolutely monumentally colossally fucked like remember to water your pets and grandparents people but yeah my main point is we've seen like as they've happened the record-breaking temperatures in different european capital cities and then like lists of all of them as a little awareness things but it just struck me that isn't it meant to be summer also in the middle east where it's also usually hot. I haven't seen many broadcasts or reports about astonishing new temperatures being reached in Qatar or Jordan or anywhere, which leads me down two thought paths, really. One, it isn't that different. It's not that bad in the sense of either A, the temperature isn't going up that much there for some unknown reason, or B, once you reach to a certain point of being able to survive in heat, you pack on more heat and it doesn't even matter until your blood boils. And like, so then no one sound an alarm, which, you know, we can humor that reality for a moment. And then there's my other thought process where, which also has like a two path sort of option. I like this, each option branches off into a two way street. All right, so then it is fucked up there. And they're just not reporting about it because, well, they're not white people. They're not European cities that we advertise holidays to on TV all the time and and encourage migration from and whatnot. So we're not going to tell people just because pretty much yada yada racism. And then the other side of that is, oh, well, it's usually hot there. And it's getting hotter to the point where these are numbers that if you show people, they will shit their pants. It might even make some people go look past the fact that it's mainly brown people that live there and go, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. The world is melting. Oh, fuck. Because, like, I figure if the Arctic's on fire, then I fig they can't be cooling down in the desert. Imagine that. Imagine that. Oh, uh, yeah, well, climate change was the right term to call it because the climate did change, so now there's ice caps in Saudi Arabia and the North Pole is sandy. But, yeah, I, I just thought of this now and I don't really want to even look it up. I don't want to confirm any of my theories. So, yeah, if you want to know, you're going to have to do it yourself because I'll probably end up doing it in my own time and getting upset about it because there's no winning there. There really isn't. <laughs> Alright, I'd like to just mention that I did want this channel to be about many of things. I didn't want to just focus on politics, but hey, it is what it is. I thought I'd cover what's important as it's important, and then in my downtime, cover the other things I want to cover. But downtime, if only the Australian government could just stop being shit for five minutes, I could make a video about all the capital cities or all the bones in a human body. I've got all these I've got all these plans and scripts and research and art supplies and I don't really want to use fancy art supplies on anything to do with the fucking chuds we have in our parliament. I try to find ways around it where I'll attach the artwork to something that is good or more important in some way. Like my last video I posted is a good example of that where 
fuck you, Scott Morrison. You have blood on your hands. But I really want to draw something, and 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 Jared deserves a drawing more than anything else in that scenario. Like if I I get upset and emotional and just randomly start to break down because of things that happen to strangers. Someone once said to me to stop. That's not healthy. That's not good. I should go see somebody for it. And my instant thought was, well, no, no, fuck you, fuck you. And everyone else that thinks that because that's probably what's wrong with the world. Oh, you give a shit about other people. There's something wrong with you. Fuck off. Like, I think I humoured that for about a millisecond and thought, no, 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 no. That will go against everything I believe, everything that is a part of me that I'm proud of. So you can go around and not care about anything but yourself. That's fine. Go for it. But don't suggest to me that I need to do the same thing because I am upset that 40 young boys were killed by a bomb made by Lockheed Martin while they were in a school bus. That's meant to upset you. I don't see what deciding factor of that makes it so I'm not allowed to be upset by it. Because if that happened in my town, I would be absolutely mortified, devastated, probably that If it happened in my country, we'd all not stop talking about it and all feel deep sorrow for the kids. But because it happens in another country or because it happens to people that speak a different language to me or have a different skin tone, I'm not allowed to be upset. Or what was it? Is it because it's in a country where my country's allies are making the bombs so yada 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 military industrial complex profit for a few people death of innocence i can't be upset what's the deciding thing that makes it so i can't be upset about that event like i remember watching the lint cafe and 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 the emotions that came with that and then i'm sure many other australians can relate to that and understand especially when we're putting flowers out in the town in the town square why can't you have that same level of emotion and empathy for foreign events i've already listed really the um possible options of explanations for that and they're all fucking shit so i'm gonna continue on being me oh my god i remember the week that happened the um bomb being dropped on the school bus in yemen it was still fresh on tv probably a day or two later Right, and there was somebody at my mum's house and there was a conversation going on and in my eavesdropping, I heard the whole, you know, yada yada. Or oh, nah, I can't be a feminist. I'm a male. I did yell over the room. Don't be stupid. I know that you know what it means. So why are you being stupid? And they said, oh, no, nah, I try to say it to some chick. And she responded with, no, you can't because you don't know. You don't know what it's like. And I think he then actually took that as a point and went with it and was like, all right, she won. When he told me this, my first response was pointing at the screen behind me, which just had a news report about the boys in Yemen. My response, pretty much, quote, I've never had a Tomahawk missile dropped on me compared to the rest of the world. This isn't a place where you would expect a Tomahawk missile to be dropped on anyone. So it would say that I'm safe. So never had it happen to me. Can't really anticipate it happening to me. Does that mean that I can't fight against it? Does that mean I can't try and help prevent it happening anywhere? If you were to leave everyone that has experienced whatever it is that we're talking about to have to fight it, that's pretty fucking savage and horrible. Like there were no allies. The only people with disabilities can fight for their rights. Do you see where this falls apart? Do you see why you don't need to be one to support them? Now, with that being said, never mind that with that being said, because that's from just before I paused it to answer a phone call from my mate, Cole James Cash, the host of Ghetto News Network, Now, how's this for some spooky shit? He just wanted to let me know that even though he's moved twice, he's still put together 
a piece about being an ally that was to accompany the video I did on Black Lives Matter. How is that for some spooky shit? Ooh, and yeah, I guess, yeah, thank you for that. And go check out his podcast. Oh, what am I even going to draw for this? All right, well, I feel a lot better now anyways after that phone call and after this little bit of a rant. And that was the main point of it. So I'll wrap this up and start drawing. Like, subscribe. I'll have the links below if you want to support in any other way. And uh, yeah, have a nice day. Oh my god, I don't even need to draw anything. I just remembered I have some footage of a drawing already done by my friend, my amazing friend Alex, who is a fantastic artist. That's why I've been hounding for some work for the channel. Shout out to Alex and shout out to, of course, my bro beans at Ghetto News Network for interrupting this recording process, but in the most amazing of ways. Okay, now that's time. Goodbye, see you later, have a nice one.